In this video, I'm going over how to use integrals to find the work of an isothermic process. So, first off, we, we want to know what an integral is. What is an integral? So, an integral is an antiderivative. So, integral is antiderivative. And so, when we look at a derivative, say, say we had you're trying to find the derivative of a function, say, y. Well, that's, that's terrible. Y. Just undo, undo. So y equals, say, ln of x. Then the derivative of this, y prime, equals one over x. And so you just kind of have to know that the, the derivative of ln to x is one over x. But if we wanted to take the antiderivative of it, then basically we're undoing this. So if we want to find the anti or the integral of this, then really we're getting, you know, we're undoing this. So 1 over x, so that would be y equals ln of x. So if we're going from, you know, having having this formula here, this function, and getting the derivative of this function, then the antiderivative or the integral is going to be the undoing of finding the derivative, which will be, in this case, ln of x. So on a PV diagram, let's say for a process of a gas, so we're going from, well, let's just draw the graph here, there's the y-axis, here is the x-axis, so the x-axis here is going to be the volume, and we have here, move this over, this will be the pressure. So if we want to find the work done of this gas as it goes from, say, state 1, and here this will be state 1 here, 1, and we're going to state 2, and say state 2 is arbitrarily right there, then the curve, because the temperature is staying the same in an isothermic process, you know, iso means the same, so kind of like, you know, like isotope, then we're going to have a hyperbolic shape, a hyperbola, that looks sort of like this. And then the work, because the work is the area underneath the curve, the work is going to be this shaded area here. And normally, we could find work using you know, the formula work equals pressure times delta volume. But since we don't know what the instantaneous pressure is at any given point, like, like what is the pressure here? Well, I don't know. So then we have to use the formula um, and using integrals to find that. But you know, first off, if we take the ideal gas law, you know, PV equals nRT, then we know if we have an isothermic process that the temperature is going to be constant. But that's not going to be the only constant because the you know the R is a constant as well, so that there's two constants. And now the number of moles in the system that's not going to change either. So we have a constant. So this whole thing here is just a constant. So this is the same thing as writing pressure times volume equals a constant. So if we want to find the work, then we kind of need to know what the function of volume is. And so if we took you know PV equals NRT, we can rewrite this. And if we divide both sides by V, well, so I'll show you. So we take P equals nRT divided by volume. And that's just dividing volume by both sides. We take volume here, and we divide by volume there, and we get P equals nRT over volume. Then that is the same as writing P of V equals nRT over V. So now we get into an integral. So to begin using integrals, we, we use the work equals the area underneath the curve, which will be an integral. And this is this notation here just means we're going from state one, so volume one to volume two. And I'll just write this. So if this is state one, then our v one is going to be here. And if we follow this down, then our this will be v two. And conversely this will be P one, right, for the pressure we're going over. And you know if we bring this over then we get P two. So we're just going from v1 to v2, and we want to know what the work done is of this curve 
as it goes from here to there. So work equals d of v times delta v. And delta v is kind of like if we try to use this with rectangles. Let's say we put a whole bunch, like hundreds of thousands of microscopic rectangles. These aren't microscopic, but you know, you know what I mean. Then we can kind of approximate the area of this graph. So this that's kind of like delta v, but it's infinitesimally small. So that's that's the that's the formula here. This is the the formula for using the integrals to find the work. But this doesn't do much much do us much good. So we kind of have to rearrange this. So what is p of v? P of v, as we found here, was nRT over v. So we can rewrite this as work equals the integral of v going from v1 to v2 of p of v. So we'll substitute this in for v, p of v, and we'll get nRT over v times delta v, because delta v does not change. Now, because of this whole thing, this nRT was a constant, right? P of v times a constant. We could move this over and leave it outside of the equation. So we'll get it. Well, we're just moving it from one part of the equation to another. So then we get work equals going from v1 to v2. Oops. Hold on. Let me rewrite this better. Give it more space. Okay, so work equals, and we're just going to move this here to there. So then we get nRT. It's kind of like factoring it out. Oops. Going from v2, going from v1 to v2 equals, and now since we factored this out, all we're going to be having is 1 over v times delta v. So remember what I said about the, we're taking the integral, so the antiderivative of this. And we go back up here. If we have y equals ln x, then y prime will equal 1 over x. So if we had, you know, y, well, that's, a, that's on the edge of j, I don't know why. If we had y equals uh, 1 over, say, a, f a constant or like a, uh, a variable v, then if we took the antiderivative of it, or let's see why let's see why derivative is this because remember this slope is the well we're going to sort of get the derivative but if you took the antiderivative of this this looks really similar to you know y prime equals one over x so then we just we get y equals ln of v that that's taking this and using the antiderivative and so then we get ln x or ln v in this case. So this is the same as rewriting the equation again to be work equals, you know, nRT. Can't forget the nRT. Going from v1 to v2 of ln of v. So we're going from remember, we're, and this is times delta v. So we're going from state one to state two. So you know, the change in volume equals v2 minus v1. This is the same as like you know, the change in the average like velocity or distance to slope or something like that. It's just the change in volume equals V2 minus V1. So we do ln, or natural log, because we took the antiderivative of it, of V2 minus ln, natural log, of V1. And that, that this whole thing here, is the equation for finding work. So, you know, if we knew this, then we could plug in, let's say this whole thing came up to six. That would be six times, you know, ln of volume two minus ln of volume one. So I'll, I'll substitute values in just to make this, this clear. If V1 equals volume, let's say, so let's say it's 10, and volume two was, say, 20. Remember, these are just like that. Then if we wanted to calculate the work, we would just substitute these values in. Work equals nRT, nR, the integral notation, very confusing, of ln, now the ln of V2, so what was V2? V2 was 20, and V1 was 10. So we do ln of 20 minus ln, natural log, of 10. And this, we'll calculate 
the work under the curve. Now remember, since we know the logarithm rules, like um, log a plus log b is the same as writing log a times b. Well, sorry, yeah, log a times b. But uh, yeah, so you could so you could rewrite this as log. Uh, well, I mean, you could rewrite. Don't forget this. Just rewrite this as work equals nRT v2 v1 ln. Remember this. Let's go back to ln v2 divided by ln v1. So you could rewrite. You could rewrite this as two different ways. Either of these is correct. So both. Are correct. So in this case, you know, we substituted our values in. If we knew what this was, if that came out like let's say n times r times t just equal to six, then it'd be six times this, and that will be the work. You know, of course, in in joules if you're using SI units. And that that's how you do it. That's that's it to calculate the work of an isothermal process using integrals trying to get the area under the curve.